guys. Today is day 11 of the 25 days of Thriftmas, and I want to welcome you to my channel. I'm Sonnet, the owner and creator behind Sonnet's Garden Blooms, and today we are going to be talking tin tarts. So I ended up thrifting a bunch of vintage ones, and I could not pass those up. Uh, I'm sure many of you have a ton of them. I do not, and I wanted to incorporate those into my kitchen decor. So I went searching, and on Amazon, I did find a bunch of them. Actually, 36 to a pack, to be exact. Now, do they look vintage? No. I am trying to figure out uh, like a solution to come up with to make them look vintage, but in today's video, I am coming up with five ways you can use these amazing tin tarts. So stick around and I cannot wait to hear what you guys think at the end. So here they are and this is how they are packaged. And when you open them up, they're all stacked. There's all different varieties. So I think you end up getting like eight different varieties. And I love the shapes. I think they're super cute and I could not wait to start playing around with them. And initially my vision for all of these were different ornaments and there's a ton of possibilities. So for project one, I started with the round one and I'm taking the rubber mallet and what I'm doing here is I'm just hammering it and these bend very easy so here I plan on making a tag for my niece Hadley. I'm attending her birthday party tomorrow and I knew that I wanted to do like a custom tag. This would also be perfect for all your Christmas gifts as well. So uh, a couple ways you can do a custom tag is you can hand stamp it like we're going to do today or you can um, even paint all of it and you can actually just stamp it with um, like rubber stamps. So you could do a custom stamp like that if you had a really tiny um, stamps. But what we'll do today is I did have some stamp sets that I had picked up ages ago um, from Hobby Lobby. And I am taking one of the stamps. I'm going to use all the capitals. So when you hand stamp um, into metal, you can um, have capital letters, lowercase. And I thought, oh, it would be perfect with just all capital letters. And this is normally I stamp into something, other types of metals. This is kind of like a flimsy metal, so it bends very easy. Uh, so I only, I hammered on it a couple times for each um, stamp that I did. So I just eye it up and line it up the best I can. And really the key here with stamping is it's not always going to be a 100% perfectly straight. Uh, you, It's just, you know, kind of like it, the imperfections make it perfect. So I finished stamping her name. And then what we're going to do is we are taking marker and just a Sharpie marker. I'm filling in her name with a Sharpie marker. And I do this for all my hand stamp bracelets, all the hand stamp jewelry. I just use marker. Then I take alcohol and I just get a little bit on a um, paper towel wipe off the excess on the outside and then just um, buff off any of it and then you're all set and then you have your very custom tag or even an ornament. Now what I want to do is I want to jazz it up a bit and so I love DIY paint. It adheres to virtually everything so I'm applying two coats of crinoline to just these edges because I really want to make that pop and I'm going to let that dry very thoroughly and then after it dries I am going to come back and seal it with Big Top. Now that that is completely dry and done, you can see the front and the back. I've punched a tiny hole in the top um, with a, uh, it's just a little metal punch that I have. And I am going to use embroidery floss. And I've had a lot of 
um, these embellishments in my stash um, from my scrapbooking years. And I thought, what a perfect opportunity to use that. She is such a little girly girl. And to add just a little bit of pink to this tag. So this would be perfect for custom um, ornaments or tags for your um, presents under the Christmas tree. project two I found another perfect size tin tart in the pack and I also found these little trees I think I picked the trees up possibly at Target there was a whole pack of them and they were miniature and right away I'm like this will be perfect to put this little miniature tree in the tin tart I took the tin tart and um, that paper that I have right there too. If you all remember um, from the Goodwill bins, I got that whole scrapbooking pack and this paper was in there. So I thought what a perfect opportunity to break out the paper. Um, so I actually laid the paper over the tin tart and I just rubbed around the the bottom of it and it, it actually created an indentation in that scrapbook paper that I was able to then cut around and it gave me the perfect size to fit right in the background. Now I like the look of the black so I'm using Mod Podge and I'm just going to put a little bit of Mod Podge down and then put my paper inside, smooth it all out, and then we're going to place the tree inside the little tin tart. Now it's time to start uh, adhering the tree in that, and I wanted to use E6000 glue in there, so initially what I did is I put a little bit of the E6000 glue on there, and then I tucked the little tuffing, like the stuffing part underneath that to make it look like snow. Uh, I was holding it for a while thinking it was going to dry fairly quick, uh, but it did not. So then I end up coming back with a secondary solution. I applied a little bit more glue and then I used my hot glue gun. So the hot glue gun held it in place until the E6000 glue completely dried and that was my final solution. For the third project, you guys, I had so much fun with this one. I took a round. I ended up finding this. I believe it was like at Home Depot. I painted it Farm Girl from DIY, and I am really loving this green. It is definitely very Christmassy to me, and I applied one even coat to the entire piece. I let it dry very thoroughly, and then and after that, I took my hand sander and I basically distressed it. I wanted some of the wood grain to come through um, on this. And the reason that is, is because we are going to create a Christmas tree on top of this with the tin tarts. Now, I reason I went with green for the background is I thought trees are normally around other trees so there's going to be a lot of green and that's my vision here i sat there and thought about it for a while so you guys in the comments let me know should i've done a different background to make it pop more once you see the finished product um i'd love to know your thoughts too 
Now before I sand it, I am going to open up this pack and I kind of want to envision or start laying out how I want the tin tarts. And um, as you can see, these are wrapped up really well. And I, again, you get quite a few different varieties. So let's get started in laying them out. So right away, I thought on the very bottom for to make the very distinct tree, um, the line of the tree, I thought four of those right across the bottom. And then from there, I wanted one on the very top to make like the star of the tree and then start angling down. And I was trying to play around with it and figure out which ones would work best where. Plus, I also came up with the idea that I probably should have almost like a trunk. And so I wanted to create some going all the way straight down the center. And I just start playing around with it like this until they all fit. And it actually looks like a Christmas tree. So what do you guys think so far? I can't wait to hear. So at this point, I set all those aside and now we're, I'm coming back and I want to seal the whole round. I'm using Big Top from DIY and I am going to apply a one even coat to the entire piece. Now I came up with the idea to add a little bit of that scrap paper to the inside of every single one of the tin tarts. So I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm flipping the tin tart over and I'm rubbing around the very edge and it creates the perfect template. So you can actually see that round impression in uh, the actual scrapbook paper and then that allows me to cut it out. So I'm going to do that for each one of the tin tarts and it was, it took a little bit, but it was very relaxing and I had a lot of fun doing that. I had three different papers and this is all paper that I have recently found at the bins and I kind of did rows of the different colored papers. So wherever, like the bottom row all got the same paper, the next row of tin tarts got that and the next type paper and I just kept on until all the way up and that's kind of how I came up with what tin tarts got what paper now I have it all laid out here and we're going to take just a tiny little bit of Mod Podge and put it in each one of these little tin tarts and make sure that it adheres very well I just thought that with the background being the green and a tree being green, having uh, the little pieces of paper in each tin tart would add so much. Now I relayed it all out once the round completely dried and I'm going to start on the top with my E6000 glue and I'm just going to squirt a little bit of glue on each of the bottoms of the tin tarts and then start placing them. So I start up on top and I just wanna make sure, I mean, it's, I wanna make sure everything is even and it looks um, perfect. Uh, so I work my, I just start working my way down and uh, again, I'm, I want to get that trunk perfect and then work my way down. So at this point, um, what are you guys thinking? Um, should I have done anything more? I just thought this was super cute. I loved the little idea of the tree and I love the use of all these tin tarts because they were coming out of my ears because I had bought four packs of these and I can make a lot of ornaments, but I was trying to get creative Creative and think what else I could do with these cute little tin tarts as well. Last but not least, I am adding a trunk. So I had this little spindle chunk left over from a project and I never throw any of the spindles away. It was the perfect size for the trunk of this tree. And then one side on the back side, it actually had a flat piece. So I just added a little E6000 to that, laid it down, and it made the perfect little trunk for my tree.
for project four. So I'm breaking out another little round tin tart and crinoline. And I really like crinoline. It, it's a very soft white. It's not really bright. And I thought it would be perfect for a Christmas tree ornament. And uh, it's kind of like an antique white. So I am applying two coats of crinoline to the inside and to the back side. I'm going to let that dry very thoroughly. And then we're going to take some scrap decoupage paper that I always save all my scrap pieces. And we are going to create the perfect little image for the inside. So so recently I did a flip using this paper and you can see how bright white that paper is but that's okay it will definitely tone down a bit once you get it placed on the crinoline and I am just taking my um, pen and I'm going to just trace around the very edge uh, but I tried to flip it over initially and make like a little crease like I did with the cardstock. But because it was a little bit jaggedy on the bottom, um, all those little indents, it didn't work the best. So by me just tracing around, I was able to quickly um, just make a semi-circle looking type of thing that I could cut out. And now we're going to decoupage that in the center. So I'm taking liquid patina from DIY and I find that liquid patina works perfect with the Roycycle decoupage paper and I am just going to lay that paper right down in the center, take my brush, smooth it all out and by smoothing it out it's going to completely seal the paper. Then I'm going to take the remaining liquid patina and seal the rest of the crinoline from DIY so it will completely seal the whole piece. Next I'm going to take a mold from IOD and the IOD air dry clay and I didn't show you all the steps but you do take cornstarch put it inside of there um, and then take your air dry clay and, and smoosh it all in and make that back flat. I didn't show all that, but here's what we got. And I thought this would look perfectly cute inside of that little tin tart. So what I'm going to do is let that dry overnight, and then we're going to come back and finish it. So after it's dried overnight, it's nice and hard. I am going to take crinoline um, because the air dry clay is so white. I wanted to have it match. So I'm taking crinoline and I am going to apply one even coat over the whole piece. Let that dry. And then we are going to take type on and we are going to adhere it inside. So type bond is definitely my go-to when uh, applying any type of air dry clay. I squirt a little bit on the back, use my finger to rub it thoroughly over the entire piece, and then I can place it wherever I want. And this type bond is perfect for when you're working with small pieces, uh, large furniture pieces. The one thing I do recommend with furniture is if you're going to be adhering any of of the air dry clay to the front tip that um, like a dresser on the back side and have it lay flat to dry For my fifth and final project, again, breaking out that scrap decoupage paper that I have and three of the little round tin tarts. And now we are going to be making a banner and I would love it to say joy. So first and foremost, I am going to make that indentation in my um, paper and cut that out. And I'm going to cut a round piece for each of the little tin tarts. 
Next, we're breaking out Letterpress by IOD. It is a stamp set that has three different fonts and by far one of my favorites. Uh, we're also using the black permanent ink pad and we're pulling off each of the letters and using a little piece of backer and inking up each of the letters and then stamping them on that little round piece. I recommend letting it dry and then once they're dry, then you can decoupage it into the bottom. And really it's as simple as that. We're using liquid patina again to decoupage the recycled paper in the bottom and we'll let those dry very thoroughly. Once that's dry, then what I want to do is punch the holes and apply the string to create our little banner. I'm using this little punch and it is really intended for jewelry making. I punch a little tiny hole on each side of the tin tarts and now we're going to run a little string to create our little banner. I'm using what's called waxy flax and it is actually like it has a wax um, overlay over this like type of string. It makes it very easy to work with and string through small holes like this. I have had this for years um, back from again my scrapbooking days and what I did is I just tied um, a knot and I looped the string through it twice to make the knot a little bit thicker so it wouldn't go through the hole. I eyed it up to see how much of a distance I wanted between the J and the O. Um, in the end, I think I probably should have had them maybe a little bit closer, but I really like the outcome after it was completely done. Then I'm going to take it and I found this little basket at Target and I thought this would look super cute hanging inside of it. So I took my stapler and I stapled it to each of the um, ends to the back side and I love the finished product. What did you guys think? I had a ton of fun playing around with the different tin tarts. Actually, there was quite a few more ideas that I came up with. I just did not have enough time to implement them. Now, if you want to um, get the link for the tin tarts, I have them listed or have it listed in the description below along with um, the little bling blings. I'll have that all in the description. That way you guys aren't having to search high and low where I found these. But I ended up getting four packs of these and I do want to eventually find like a solution to make them look old and aged. They are a bit bright for me. So I think my favorite, honestly, of all today's projects was the sign. I had so much fun like trying to figure out how to make it look like a Christmas tree and I am definitely going to be including that in my home decor. So now day 12, which is tomorrow, we're going to continue on the theme of ornaments and I have lots of ideas for you. So one thing that I've always wanted to do um, which will be tomorrow's video and I am going to include that on my Christmas tree as well. So I hope you guys um, stick around till tomorrow and if you do like today's video go ahead give it a like. Um, definitely share it so others know um, and in the comments I can't wait to hear what you guys think about the tin tarts and if you want to know more about the challenge for the 25 days of thriftmas go back to day one and all the details will be in there so you guys have a wonderful evening and we will see you tomorrow bye